By the way, today we are going to have a conversation with Lucifer. <laughs> you had me right. With Lucifer himself. I know it's a kind of shocking, but what he reveals in this video is very relevant to us today. And uh, I was watching this video from Ivan, and I'm going to link it in the description so that uh, you can go check out the original video. This is a reaction to that video. He made this video some uh, time back, and I was looking at it, and I, I felt as Christians, we need to be aware of the devices and the ways that the enemy is using to get us. And these things are obvious. I wonder why we keep on falling in the traps again and again. But I hope this video is going to help you change. It's going to draw you near to God and far from uh, the devil. And yeah, so guys, without further ado, let's get started. Whew. Whoa, Lucifer in the flesh. Do you know how many journalists would kill? Wait, you probably do. Uh, but by the way, I love how this guy <laughs> starts the interview. It's it's a bit fun, and I just like the humor that he starts with. Anyway, let's continue watching. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to agreeing to this interview because I know you are a very, very busy person. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit, it's a bit challenging to to interview Lucifer, but the guy I think is very composed, and the way he is uh, introducing this show is really giving me some goosebumps to know what what's happening in this video. Okay, uh, okay, let's let's look at this. Yes, I usually like to fly under the radar, but I figured since I'm already on the campaign trail. Why not? Okay. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. You you realize those three things he mentions. He offers sex, wealth, and fame. Those are the things that he's using. That's the strategy that the enemy is using. Okay. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Lust of the flesh lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Look at that. And that is recorded in the Bible. It's mentioned many times in the Bible as one of the strategies the enemy is using to get to us. Okay? So he explains further in this video, and I hope you're going to get that. Okay. Okay. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on. What do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Take pornography, for example. Well, you should know a lot about this one, Ivan. Weren't you addicted to porn? <coughs> um. This interview is about you, uh, not about me. Can we get back on subject? And, and by the way, there's something important he mentions that he never created anything. He uses an example of sex. He never created sex, but he has he has perverted it. So in other words, the enemy or Lucifer or the devil hasn't created anything yet, but he perverts what God has created. And I think that is one thing you need to, to understand, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. What I do is gradually get someone addicted to porn. And once Lust has had his full work and he and she can no longer restrain themselves, they usually look to act out their fantasies on someone. And sometimes that someone is a child. Now, if my plan plays out perfectly. That abused child will eventually turn to a life of promiscuity and perversion themselves, allowing me to continue my vicious cycle. 
And here's the kicker. Many of those abused girls end up right in the porn industry. Now, how's that for irony? Mm. The second thing you had mentioned, I believe, you said lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money. Look at that. He says humans are never satisfied when it comes to wealth, money, fame, and all that. And he uses that as an advantage to his kingdom to lure many of us in there. And you find most of us are not satisfied with what we have. We are not content with what we have. And so if it is fame, we need much fame. If it is money, we need more of the money. If it is our wealth, we need so much of it. We can even kill to get the wealth. So now he has realized that as humans, uh, we are not satisfied with what we have. And therefore, he needs to promise us to give us more of what we need for us to get into his kingdom. And this is uh, one of his strategies that he's using, especially to music influencers uh, and even to some extent some of the preachers uh, who claim to preach Christ, but at the end of the day, they don't. So I feel we need to be satisfied and content with what we have so that the enemy will not get a chance to lure us. More power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have heard that before. The last thing you had mentioned was, I believe, pride of life. Now, how does this fit into your campaign platform? Humans are always on a quest for knowledge. I trick the first humans to seek carnal knowledge over godly wisdom, and it's worked like a charm every generation since. With more knowledge comes more pride, and you know pride is my specialty. And since humans don't like to keep God in their wisdom, I'm able to seduce them with all types of things to help. You get that point? He talks of pride. And God hates pride. But for him, pride is everything. So he instills in us pride. And once you become proud, even we have some quotes that say that, uh, in, in fact, not even a quote, a verse that says that uh, when you have pride, that is the beginning of your fall. And so he uses pride to get us. And at the end of the day, we are going to fail. So I think we need to shun away from being proud and being arrogant at the same time puff up their ego lately fame has been my biggest seller who doesn't like attention and feeling more important than the next person once i make them famous i can really use them to promote my agenda with their help i've convinced half of the world to not only accept sin but to celebrate it he has convinced the world not only to accept sin but to celebrate it. And, and I was wondering, these are the things that I see every single day, that we are celebrating sin, and yet we need not to. We need to even shun away from sin. We need to walk away from sin. And sometimes the Bible says we need to flee away from sin. But he makes us to not only love sin, but celebrate sin. Oh my God. I hope this video is going to help you change uh, uh, your ways and uh, focus on, on God. Because this is a strategy that I think the enemy has devised it so well and it's, it's really working for him. Do you know what has been my most enjoyable pride campaign to date? No, what? Well, my gay pride campaign, of course. <laughs> the, the pride that he's using, he says the gay pride. And, 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 and this brings the question why gay and LGBTQ is now on the rise. And you realize that it's just the strategies, using that strategies, making people to uh, openly celebrate 
uh, relationships of the same gender and people also having the to transform their genders from one gender maybe a female to a male and and we see this sort of confusion but instead of shunning away and running away from such a uh, scene we celebrate it we see this all over tiktok we see it all over news we see it all over the, the countries and in fact it is coming down to african countries and he says that gay pride is one of his strategies to win many in his kingdom and we are proudly celebrating that okay i wish the gay community watches this not only do i get the chance to promote your own self-destruction i get to use god's logo the rainbow to do it he uses god's logo the rainbow the enemy has never created anything why is he using god's things to lure people in it i don't know but he says he perverts it anyway love is love right <laughs> My plan not only prevents you worthless humans from reproducing, it distorts the gender roles and allow me to bring all types of chaos and confusion upon your pathetic societies. It's been so successful, I've got men convinced they're women, and women convinced they're men, and some convinced they're no gender at all. And I've got two more pride initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Mm, really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've been listening to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do is silence the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers, because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. And second, it's pedophilia pride. Now, society might not be ready for this one just yet, so we'll hold off. I need to desensitize them a little more before we introduce it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, dangerous even. Uh, what would be your response to that? What would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things, either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda and I'm not promoting it. Okay. Okay, so he mentions clearly that his agenda is to steal, kill and destroy. And this is what is mentioned in John 10:10. 10, 10. And he says that it is either one of it or all the three. And if that is not part of it then that is not his strategy. <sighs> Okay. okay, I'm happy you said that. It seems as if you promote your agenda differently to different, to different ethnicities. Uh, if so, why? Of course, I'd be a fool not to. Take black people, for instance. As a people, they're super spiritual. So I can't really convince them that there is no God. What I have been able to do as of late is convince them that he's not the God of the Bible. Now, I've been real successful at promoting black consciousness and Islam in their communities. I'm so happy you mentioned black people. It seems as if we've been at the very top of your agenda for quite some time. Why is that? A few reasons. Black people helped me reach the masses. Now, as you know, I was over music in heaven. My beats were so dope, I got over a third of the angels to follow me. And once I got here to the earth, I needed artists and entertainers to help me promote my message here. Who better than black people? Black people possess all the natural rhythm and music ability that I need. And it's easy for me to influence them with money since so many of them grew up without it. You, you see, his plan is to use the blacks. And he mentions that the blacks have high spirits. Um, and he's trying to convince them. First, he says he cannot convince them that there is no God. So when he realized that, he devised another way. That now, I want to tell them, yes, there is God, but this is not the God of the Bible. And he's mentioning he was, he was also part of music in heaven. And uh, he's using music to promote his agenda. And why is he picking on the blacks? 
because many of the blacks grew in a, a poor environment and therefore he can give them money because he has money remember when he said that humans are not satisfied so he can give them money and wealth and fame and influence to some extent so that they can help him promote uh, his gospel and i've been seeing this happen so many times recently i made a video about diamond and he was uh, coming on the stage in a coffin and i saw og calligraph jones was saying you know you copied me because jones uh, six years ago he also entered the stage uh, in a coffin and, and and i was thinking is, isn't this devil worshiping but i've just realized that it is his strategy is using more of the blacks because they are more vulnerable to money and, and fame and wealth because we are not satisfied we have been growing in areas that are very poor and are very humble and he's using that for his advantage but i hope that uh, we are watching this and we are going to avoid that he even goes into the church because he knows pastors in africa are poor so he will promise them uh, heaven in quotes and give them money and you see when uh, they are lured into that they now are not preaching the the god of the bible they are preaching prosperity and motivational speaking and all that yeah. so i just felt like reacting on on the section of the blacks because he targets the blacks and it is time that we need to realize that this strategy is intending to end our 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 race even even when you see the things of lgbtq you you know he's just trying to end our race in the next 100 150 years to come we will not have numbers because he knows a man and a man cannot give birth a woman and a woman cannot give birth so he's trying to control or to depopulate us but i hope you are we are watching and we not fall for his traps another reason i target black people is because they're strong mentally and physically if black men were to ever find their identity in christ i'd be in trouble so i try my best to destroy the black family structure and keep black men away from his family and the church drugs and incarceration are a couple of my more popular means without the head of the household present i can become the head and influence the children without too much resistance. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best law I've ever come up with. Now, I can't believe that humans still believe they are different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. And out of all my strategies, this skin color thing has worked the best. I definitely want to keep white people and black people separated. As long as I can keep black people bitter and white people offended, I'm good. Hopefully black people will never forgive. That way I can continue to use them. Okay, what, my question is, what role, if any, does your administration play in this black on black crime epidemic? <laughs> Well, as great as my administration is, we can't take all the credit for this. Black people help us tremendously. By aborting so many of their babies, they allow us to bring death to their communities. As the Bible says, they sow the wind and they reap a whirlwind. Mm. When implementing all of these policies, do you ever face... I, I, hope, I hope the blacks we, we are watching he he mentions that he targets the family first and that's the introduction of lgbtq and then he targets them knowing christ he doesn't want them to, to to know christ why because he says if they know christ then he is in so much problems okay i promise we'll know christ and we know christ and we are going to preach christ so that his kingdom, the kingdom of 
the devil will not have our souls there. This is a message to everyone everywhere. You need to get this clearly, especially if you are a black. He has spent much time to just speak and tell us how he targets the blacks. I, I hope we are taking everything serious because well, this is a, a huge strategy and I, I don't want us to be, to be part of it. Is any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along in my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born again, Jesus followers. <laughs> do, do you realize how he's uncomfortable when he's mentioning Jesus? The, the, Lucifer is very afraid when he's about to mention Jesus, he he has some you know fear in him in, in him and, and he feels like you know I'm burning. So he says that he hates those who know Christ. He hates those who are truly born again. These are the people that he's trying to fight every single day, and these are the people who are disturbing him. And he clearly mentions that he doesn't want them. But we are there. <laughs> we are there and, and we'll continue praying. We'll continue disturbing his kingdom until, I don't know if he'll ever give up, but until he gives up, okay? And, and I'm happy that he fears to mention the name Christ. He's, go, he's also going to mention it. And I want you to be very careful how his tone is very low and you can feel some fear in his voice. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation, they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now, I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell-bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. Because some of them believe he's coming to unseat me in this generation. <laughs> Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, those idiots are really messing with my legacy. So look. You see how unsettled he is? <laughs> the guy is very unsettled anyway. Oh my God. Lucifer, how does that make you feel when uh, us idiots say that Jesus possibly could be coming back in this generation to unseat you? Huh. Y'all been saying that for centuries. I just use it as motivation to get as much of my agenda pushed through and deceive as many people as possible before he returns. I think I've done pretty well. So, so first he is aware that Jesus Christ will come back. He will return. And he says he will use his opportunity before he comes back. And that shows that he is afraid of Jesus Christ. And he has perverted our minds to, and to know or to believe that Jesus Christ did not exist. I, I hope you are getting that picture. But the truth is that Jesus Christ is coming back. And he's mentioned that. He's confirmed that. Okay. The record speaks for itself. About 150,000 people die each day. And most of them don't know Jesus. You, you, you see how he calls Jesus with, with fear? I'm just happy how he's being tormented, my, my friend. <laughs> 150,000 people. Whew. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Uh, I want to say thank you for open, honest, pretty frank discussion with me. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave with our viewing audience? Yes. I'd like to take this moment and give a special thank you to two groups of people. First, I want to say thank you to all my followers. You are the hands and feet of my administration and we could do nothing without you. Keep up the good work, spread my message. And second, I'd like to say thank you to the divided church. I love the way you argue and use your passions to fight amongst each other. Keep up the good work. There's really no rush to tell people about Jesus. You all have plenty of time. Okay, okay. I've just realized that he he's happy when the church is divided. And he says he's thanking those churches that are divided, that are fighting 
against themselves. And this reminds me when Jesus was saying that a kingdom that fights against itself can never stand. A family that fights against itself can never stand. And so the devil brings confusion and fights and misunderstandings in churches so that he can get a way to lure people to him or rather to get their concentration away from Jesus Christ and put it towards Lucifer himself. Because God does not love hatred. God does not love division. And therefore, so if you love these things, then that means you are connected to the devil and not God. This video, um, it was done some few years ago, but I still feel it is the same, same strategies that the the enemy is using to get most of uh, the people in his kingdom. And I, I just made this video to bring awareness of the things that the enemy is using to fight us or to fight the kingdom of God. My prayer is that we need to take these things seriously. Whatever is stated here is serious. It is, our, it is something that is working uh, for his kingdom. And we need to walk away from every strategy that is mentioned so that we can be on the safe side. He has confirmed that Jesus Christ is coming. He has taught already to some people that Jesus did not exist. Jesus did not die and resurrect. So Jesus will not come back again. And that's why he's promoting uh, pagans, atheism, and Islam. But then he's mentioned that Jesus is coming back. And he's doing it quickly so that when Jesus is coming back, he finds that the devil has done so much. Please, let's take this seriously. Spread this message to people. You can share this video to people so that they can be aware of the strategies of the enemy, especially more Christian. I know I've asked some, I've sampled from uh, my fellow Christians if they have ever watched this video and all of them told me that they haven't ever seen this video. So I want you to spread this to other Christians to know the strategies that the enemy is using. Spread this to uh, church leaders and, and, and I hope that this video is going to help them a lot. I've linked the original video from Ivan the Evangelist in the description. Please check it out so that you can also uh, support his channel. He's doing a very commendable job and I, I really love what he's doing. Otherwise, may the Lord keep you and bless you and may he shine his face upon you. Please never forget to share this video because it's going to help someone somewhere. Hey, you've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give us a like and also subscribe for more videos. Now, click here to watch our next video and I'm pretty sure that I will see you in that video. Peace.